Okay, so as we open a garage in today's video, we do not have the S65 in the garage, but we do have a loaner. So for the first time now, after about five months of having it and putting like 6,000 miles on the S65, it's getting its first service. And I'm actually really curious to see what it's going to cost to service a V12 Mercedes. There's a couple things being done to it, and we're going to cover that in today's video. So I dropped it off yesterday. They gave me this loaner, and they were just pointing out towards the parking lot uh, at the dealership. They're like, it, that C-Class is for you. So I'm like, okay, cool. So just from like glancing at it real quick, I can't pinpoint the differences in the, in the models, to be honest. I mean, of course I can between a C-Class and an S-Class because size and stuff. But C-Class and E-Class, no. It's very nice, it's got the new key and everything. Um, it's a, you know, base model. You jump in and got a light interior. And it's got this awful new steering wheel. I hate this steering wheel. The one that I installed in, in the 65 is uh, the style of steering wheel they had prior to this style of steering wheel. Um, and I don't like this at all. The one that I have is probably my favorite. But other than that, the car is great. And everything on the steering wheel, it's all touch type weird uh, mechanisms and stuff. And it's just, I, I don't like the, the user face of the steering wheel. The one that I have has some touch buttons, but it also has physical, like actual buttons, which is much better. But anyhow, I'm gonna turn it off. I'm getting in here thinking it's a C-Class because they told me it's a C-Class. <laughs> so I'm driving it around, but then I hop out. Uh, I was going to dinner or something, and I'm like, "This is a freaking E-Class." So yeah, it's an E-Class. That kind of felt like a C-Class. Um, yeah, but that's kind of what Mercedes does nowadays. Like uh, all the models, they pretty much look the same. They just have different sizes, and then you know, the higher up you get, of course, you get more features, standard, blah blah, all that good stuff. But man, I gotta say, for November, we were, we're having some fantastic weather. Lately, it's like 60 degrees. I mean, I'm wearing a jacket, but that's because it's gonna get cold later on. But man, I love me some fall weather. I was making some Instagram stories yesterday. Since I picked this car up, I haven't touched the radio station or anything. I didn't know there was a station called Yacht Rock on Sirius XM. <laughs> so I've been driving around listening to freaking Yacht Rock the whole time I've had this car. I feel so old. But uh, my car's gonna be ready here soon. Um, so I'm just gonna go grab some lunch and then we'll pick it back up when we're gonna pick the S65 up and see what my bill is gonna be. Where's my wallet for this? So yeah, the merging onto the uh, highway is a little different in an A350 <laughs> versus the S65. So this 2023 model has a two liter uh, four cylinder turbocharged uh, engine that puts out 255 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. But it's a very like nice driving car. You know, it's also completely stock. It's not lower, it doesn't have low profile tires, doesn't have an exhaust, nothing like that. And it just, it feels like a proper Mercedes. Like it just floats around on the road. It's a very nice car. But when you're used to an AMG type of Mercedes, like these, just they, they don't cut it. They don't. It's not the same type of feel. It's just, even though it's newer, it's got probably better tech and, you know, better resolution backup camera, all that stuff. But it's just not the same. This is the newer style of uh, LED instrument cluster for the Mercedes. I actually like the LED instrument cluster that I have uh, in, in my 2016 S-Class. I just think it looks better. I like the look of it a lot better. But you know, to each its own, it's just an opinion. And we have some like, uh, it's, it's like a matte wood grain-ish. I actually kind of like it. I don't like the gloss wood grain. It just makes it feel like an old man car. But this I actually kind of like. It looks pretty good. Steering wheel though. Oh god, this thing's awful. I hate the steering wheel. Okay, so I just picked the car up. It's only 5.13, but it's like pretty much dark already. And by the time that I get home, and we go over all the numbers and stuff, of my first service of the S65, which was uh, actually more than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, See you guys in the same video, but it'll be tomorrow.
video it's the next day we got her all cleaned up she's looking i mean amazing fantastic i love this car i love the wrap but it's just everyone loves it. everyone that sees it's just like wow they think it's paint but it's not it's another beautiful fall day here november fall day i should say we're halfway into november it's like 65 degrees it's windy but it's so beautiful i love it and here i have uh the service paper for the first service that we've done on the s65 since i bought it and the main thing i wanted uh done on the car was an oil change because we've driven about six thousand miles you know they told me the car was fully serviced when i bought it and everything and i, I do believe them but you never know like they could have just said something and like gotta be careful so you don't drive too long in a car like this with this engine i don't want anything to happen obviously as it doesn't have any warranty now one thing that the car only had a one of when i bought it is a key it's kind of my mistake because I asked about uh, how many keys it has while I was sitting there signing the papers, like buying the car. And they were like, oh yeah, it only has one key. And then I had already done a bunch of negotiating and stuff. So my negotiating power was kind of like gone. So I bought the car with just one key. And uh, you know, if I were to lose that key, I'm kind of screwed. So the first thing on uh, this service sheet here is how much a key was. Now they told me initially a key fob for this car and by the way this car still has the old school key which mercedes had from like 2002 and still it was going to cost 600 dollars but because i know a guy that works there he gave me his like employee pricing on it or whatever so key key mechanic uh, and it says total line c 305 dollars that's for the actual fob and then having it programmed you gotta have it programmed to the car and it's like this whole process apparently, like I've never done it, I don't know exactly what it entails, but it takes some time and to get a second key, and I got it pretty much half off, was $305. So that's technically not a service, that was just you know something that I wanted for the car. As we're moving to the second page of the sheet here, we get to what is the oil change. So you guys can see here for yourself, Solvent washer, uh, filter, element, blah, blah, blah. Total line D, $599. Perform B service, oil and filter change, topped off all fluids, set pressures to spec, blah, 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 blah. So I guess it's not just an oil change, but that's 600 bucks for what is mainly an oil change. Then topping off fluids and stuff like that, that's like, you know, kind of minor. And then, one other thing that was extremely annoying with this car since I bought it. It sounded all the time like the window was cracked. It was a whooshing sound. So this whole piece right here, there was a slight, slight little like um, cut in this little sealant piece here. So it was constantly whooshing while I was driving. That has been replaced and that was a really cheap part. Yeah, ceiling frame, 36 bucks. So yeah, only 36 bucks. And then they did a brake fluid service, so basically a, fl a brake fluid flush. So that was 162 bucks. What we also did was uh, an alignment because the car is wearing really bad on the inside of the tire for the rear tires. I already went there once and got it aligned uh, and that pretty much fixed it on the driver's side, but it ended up wearing really bad on the passenger side still so they realigned it and that was free of charge since i had already paid for that prior so uh now since we and this is by the way because we lowered the car so then uh you know the camber is all wacky and stuff so it was wearing really if you look at these tires like they're brand new pretty much but since the car had pretty you know bad camber it was still wearing the inside of the tire and uh, you know, all of a sudden you'll just have a flat tire. You're like, what happened? What did I do? But it's because it's wearing on the inside. You don't really see it unless the car is up in the air. So all in all, for my first service, $1,174. And this wasn't like a full service because the car has 42,000 miles on it. I think the next big service is at 50,000 miles. Um, so this is kind of like an in between i just want an oil change because i'm about to take it on a long road trip uh, i just want to make sure that the car is you know a-ok -okay. it's aligned and and everything and eleven $1 hundred dollars uh 
it was supposed to be actually fourteen hundred dollars if I paid full price for this damn key but then again the key is not a service item that was just something that I I wanted like an extra key so technically I guess the service part was like eight hundred dollars uh, for an in-between service in between like the actual big service but what I paid was eleven hundred seventy or something dollars for the s65 um, so already I've paid because I did a calculation like this when I had the F12 and the only money I paid service wise for the F12 was pretty much in the end where it needed a new battery and so I forget it was something else but I paid 1400 bucks and I think 600 of that was to ship the car back and forth to Columbus so uh, we're already almost up to the maintenance cost that I had for the F12 on the second V12 car I've ever owned the S65 but I'm head over heels with the car. I mean, it is absolutely perfect. And tomorrow, actually, it's being dropped off here uh, close to where I live because that wheel and then the passenger front is badly bent. So that needs fixed. But that's technically not a service. That's just, you know, a little fix. So that we're not counting that into this uh, service cost video. But yeah, I haven't had to fix a bent wheel on a car in uh, a while. But uh, yeah, Pittsburgh is awful uh, in certain places with a lot of potholes. So you're going to have a bent wheel, especially with a big, heavy car like uh, an S-Class Mercedes. So yeah, there it is. Uh, you know, if you're in the market for, you know, an S-Class Coupe, maybe an S65 or an S63 or something like that, maybe you have a ho-hum of what, you know, it costs to maintain a car like this. Um, you know, I'm not counting like having to buy tires and all that stuff. This is just for like service stuff. And uh, if you lose a key, now you kind of know what that costs. Uh, and if you have the newer Mercedes key uh, that just has the different design and everything, it goes up to $900 for a new fob. So if you're buying a used one and they only come with one key, you gotta try to get that right off the bat. Cause yeah, they, the dealership don't really wanna pay for that, but if you're just good at negotiating, uh, you take care of that before you have to pay for it yourself So yeah, there it is. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed today's video. <laughs> I promise you there, there is more content coming It's just been a crazy time for me that I'll uh, update you guys uh, About in future videos, but we have more content coming stay tuned Thanks for watching this one if you're stopping by for the first time and you haven't already and you want to please subscribe I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, Bye.